and um, my postgrads in sports medicine, like all physiotherapists. Um, but I gave up a career spent travelling the world, being paid to touch young fit men. <laughs> <laughs> mainly because I'm an idiot, um, but also because I had three babies who were all blessed with heads <laughs> and I ruined my undercarriage, <laughs> reduced it to rubble and <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> See after that, the science of incontinence and the wonders of the pelvic floor were fascinating to me. <laughs> so I brought you a pelvic floor to look at. <laughs> Truth be told, I brought two, but you've only seen one. <laughs> so the, the white bit should be vaguely familiar if you've ever gone out on Halloween, that's a pelvis. And um, the red bits are muscles, and the blue bits are ligaments, and the pink bits you should also be kind of able to recognise because you're either sitting in a vulva or you came out of one. <laughs> now, this is a female pelvis. Well, it's a representation either that it's, you know, a nine-year-old <laughs> that I've done a mischief to. Um, <laughs> uh, men do have pelvic floors as well. I know, and stuff goes wrong with them as well, and you need to know about that because it does weird stuff to you too. I mean, I went all pishy, and guys do too, but generally men aren't so bothered by their incontinence, it's really amazing. Um, you just embrace the skin marks and, and it doesn't bother you. But when the, the, see when your willies stop working, that upsets you. <laughs> And eventually a man will take himself to the GP to cry and say, my cock's broken. <laughs> but as women are the other way around, we get upset about wetting ourselves, but don't really mind that we never had an orgasm <laughs> since we had the babies. <laughs> it's like men are from Mars, women are from Venus, we're all different. Um, anyway, the function of your muscles is to lift and kind of stop your guts from falling out, and that's quite important. Um, <laughs> resist all the forces from above, like your intra-abdominal pressure is the, the technical term for it, and that's what happens when you laugh or cough or, or sneeze, and um, when it pushes down, these wee muscles should push up and that keeps you dry, that's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> you'll know if you've got a problem with your pelvic floor because you'll be pushing yourself laughing all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so let's see what you know. Who here has got a pelvic floor? All of you. <laughs> um, who's heard of pelvic floor exercises? Yeah. Yeah. Who does their pelvic floor exercises? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> Have you seen that before? <laughs> um, usually people go and they don't do them at all, which is why which is why a third of women aged between 35 and 55 wear themselves, because nobody does their exercises. And um, they just pad themselves up a little and die inside. <laughs> Very few of them actually seek any help, which is a shame because it can be completely cured in five physio treatments. Physios. 85% um, of it can be cured in five sessions. That's quite effective. It's more effective than drugs or surgery or anything. Um, go me. <laughs> Um, and for men folks, um, if they do have erectile dysfunction, doing your exercises is more effective than taking Viagra. But Pfizer don't want you to know that. And, um, and see for premature ejaculation, 40% of it's cured within three months, with another 30% describing themselves as functional. <laughs> I don't know what the difference between those two things are, but uh, the research paper went to great lengths to separate them. <laughs> Premature ejaculation is kind of like a, an interest of mine, because, see, from a research point of view, how do you measure it? <laughs> Who decides what's premature? Because <laughs> see what like suits one gentleman. Um, <laughs> might be another one's unobtainable dream. <laughs> you know, and see any happy couple, happy couples. Um, that works perfectly well for them. But see when he dumps her and he moves on to somebody else, it's more demanding. It's a problem after that. <laughs> personally mind a bit of premature ejaculation because I've got three children in a laundry basket. I've never seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it would suit me. I'll make them do his pelvic floor exercise. <laughs> um, so the problem with being a bit pishy is, you know, apart from it's quite embarrassing for most people, 
Um, it costs money to the government. Um, about £117 million a year is their estimate, but they don't count it right. Um, the Australians count it right, and they estimate it's £47 billion. <laughs> um, because here we only count the cost of mopping it up, <laughs> 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 rather than thinking about what the effects are in somebody's life. Um, for instance, if you piss yourself in Zumba, you don't go back to Zumba. <laughs> Ask me how I know that. Um, <laughs> fine now. <laughs> and diseases of inactivity um, cause problems like heart disease, and heart disease kills one in five women in Scotland, and generally that's not very funny at all. Um, so it'd be quite good if we could keep women, you know, moving and not wet themselves. <laughs> It makes a hell of a mess. Um, the other stats that I should tell you about have just split it out of my pretty little head. <laughs> oh, hip flatters. Oh yeah, if you get a bit wet round about your gusset, you tend to fall and break your hip, which is unfortunate. Because you're rushing to get to the loo when you're getting older and you slip in a puddle. That's <laughs> true. You're rotter. You're rotten for laughing at that because a quarter of these people die. <laughs> it's serious stuff, really. Um, so happily, it can all be cured. And um, the guys, you get to, you know, not have a problem with your laundry that doesn't bother you in the first place, and um, you get to be harder for longer. That's quite good. And ladies, you get to not have to deal with incontinence pads, which aren't very good. They sort of unfurl, don't they? <laughs> Stick themselves onto your labia. <laughs> <laughs> you do. And you don't know about that until you sit down and it... <laughs> you know this fashion that's come in with all these baldy pudendas everywhere? That's where it's come from. A third of women in my age, we started all. <laughs> Charlie by accident. Um, so, exercises. Would you like to know what these magical exercises are that can make you bang on for hours, boys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought all the men had gone. <laughs> um, there's two main exercises. Um, the first one is just a long clench for about a count of ten, and the second one is ten quick flicks in a row. And these are important for reasons that I could bore you with, but I'm not going to, because it would take forever and really you're not interested, because you're not a physio. But what you are interested in is how not to wet yourself, so we'll move swiftly on to that. Um, see if you imagine that you're on a date, say, in the stand with somebody that you really like. Um, now, you can feel a wee fart brewing and you're not going to ruin the effect of presenting yourself as being a sophisticated kind of lover type by letting rip. So you're going to hold on with your bum hole. You all know what I'm talking about. That's you working your pelvic floor. So if you're dull now and like to try and clench, you have to breathe at the same time. That's quite important. And if you can try and not kind of glop your seat, <laughs> your buttocks and that's the wrong thing entirely. Um, if you're not sure about, I've got wee analogies to help. Um, ladies, if you imagine that you're trying to make enough space, I mean it's only a wee movement, it's like that. If you try and imagine you're making enough space for somebody to slip a folded £50 note into your pants, <laughs> that's the movement. <laughs> I know. It's a terrible, terrible visual image that offends every single one of my feminist principles, but it works. Um, so, that's fair. And see for the guys, if you imagine that you're walking into water, quite cold water, and it's getting higher and higher and higher, and you know that the next wee wave's just going to lick the bottom of your testicles. <laughs> really cold water. <laughs> down into your gusset. If you can't feel it drop down well, you've lost the contraction, it means you just have to try a bit harder. <laughs> um, the 10 quick flicks in a row, you're going to go, oh, I'm in the water. No, I'm not. <laughs> 50 quid. <laughs> Only a five. <laughs> Again, if you're going up and down in your seat, you're cheating, and um, if you're making kind of funny faces and concentrating, that's fine, but we just all know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, the secret to these exercises is you have to do them three times a day, every day for three months, 
and then it, it really works, you know, more effective than surgery, that's me. Um, the problem is that people forget, and physios, we're not very good at encouraging compliance because we tend to bang on about, you know, wetting yourself, which isn't very glamorous, but sex sells. <laughs> and I think that we should be banging on about you banging on because <laughs> your whole sexual function's wrapped up in this. The nerves that supply your muscles also supply your tickly bits. <laughs> I don't. So ladies, see if you find that your orgasms are a bit weak, the chances are your muscles are too. And if you do your pelvic floor exercises, the research shows that within two weeks you'll be able to have orgasms without even thinking about Commander Hadfield. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you don't know who Commander Hadfield is, do you? <laughs> no? Oh well. <laughs> you know the International Space Station? Like he was the captain of the international, he's a proper actual astronaut. <laughs> no, and he was tweet he's on Earth now, so he lives in Canada, so he's not nearly so fancy. You know that, you know that um, Bowie thing? Ah, oh, that's Commander yeah, yeah. Hanfield. There's a new guy called Luca, he's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do my pelvic floor exercises, so I never think about the man at all. <laughs> I've quite lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, oh yeah, orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> Women are built for pleasure. See the clitoris? Well, no here, obviously it's quite dark. Um, you can find it. Um, a clitoris has got 8,000 nerve endings in it. That wee button bit that guys can't find. 8,000 <laughs> nerve endings. See a bell end? See that huge expanse? That massive, really wild. Wow. <laughs> so big, wow. So massive boys. The massive expanse of a bell end's only got 4,000 nerve endings. And that, guys, is why we don't like it when you rub it. <laughs> like your beer grills trying to start a fire. <laughs> don't do that. Don't ever do that. Your massive, massive, amazing cock is half as sensitive as that tiny wee bit. Leave it alone. <laughs> I would not do that. <laughs> anyway, so that's my, my theory that if we kind of, you know, make it funny, then people would laugh and then they would talk and then we're not embarrassed about, you know, wetting ourselves in front of our neighbour and welcome mats don't make good incontinence pads. <laughs> I could also ask me how I know about that. You know, <laughs> nearly knocked her over with the giant tsunami of my steaming pish. It was <laughs> typical case study and um, you know it was pretty desperate and I did the exercises now I'm absolutely fine and can you know enjoy myself um, so you should do that too and I'm going to do this research and um, looking at compliance and using Twitter as a training tool I'm at Gussie Grips and um, when I tweet you twitch your twinkle <laughs> And I'm going to try and get some data from a fringe show that I'm doing and um, I don't really know how well this is going to go because would you come to a fringe show about pelvic floor? <laughs> it could be a long and lonely August for me. <laughs> Nothing but a knitted vagina for company in a basement bar. <laughs> so if you feel sorry for me, please do come. Um, so yeah, that's about it really. Do your exercises, hold for 10. 10 quick flick flicks in a row. Um, oh, I, guys, see if you find that your um, dreams are dry but your farts are wet, you should probably go and see your GP first <laughs> and make sure there's nothing you know actually wrong. And if everything's fine, just do your exercise. You'll be like a sex god. And, um, and ladies, then you would save yourself about 800 quid a year by not having to buy incontinence pads. It's not a good look. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much for listening.